when I learned transcription, I never, I never, it was never really about playing the notes. Like that, that's, that's kind of the entry level part of learning a transcription for me. Really, it's like you learn the notes so that you can get to the important stuff. The important stuff being that, you know, the articulation. You know, if I'm doing a Wynton Kelly solo, very important to get the articulation. That's like what makes Wynton Kelly elite. His touch on the piano is just unbelievable. And I would like really try to get close, as close as I could to that. You know, try to get the, the time feel right, get the touch right, get the, well this note is, this eighth note line is really smooth, he's holding the notes pretty long, and then this next eighth note line he plays in the next bar is more staccato or whatever. So that, that's kind of how I developed that. When I think about the musicians that I love the most, who are super killing, they have really great time feel. There's a difference between time feel and rhythm. Rhythm is something that you could, in the way I'm defining it, something that you could notate, uh, right? So if it's eight eighth notes in a row, right? But then the time feel, whether you swing them, whether they're straight, whether it's somewhere in between swung and straight, right? Whether it's straight and late, you know? Like Dexter Gordon, I feel, often plays straight and late. Uh, that I, I love to play straight and late over a pocket. If there's one thing that every great improviser has, it's a distinct time feel that's specific to them. You know, when you think about Oscar Peterson, you think about that groove that he has. You know, when you think about Herbie, you think about his time feel, whether he's playing pocket, like when he plays on Stevie Wonder's As, that song, that's actually him on the roads. A lot of people don't know that. But that solo, that time feel on that is perfect. You know, it's so, well, I shouldn't use the word perfect. I'm like trying not to use that word, but it's great. That yeah, time feels amazing. And then you hear him swing with, with Miles' group. Totally different time feel, but super elite. Developing time feel is something that a lot of people struggle with. It's something I struggle with, certainly. It's kind of, to me, I think it's one of the most important things there is. Now, the way that you practice time feel, there's a lot of ways. The first most important thing for me is to listen. Listen to music, but focusing on that part. Where are they playing the notes in, in relation to a, a central pulse, wherever that might be? For me, like listening to Errol Garner was a really was a really important foundational experience in what time feel sounds like. Errol Garner, in my opinion, probably has the most intricate time feel of any pianist in the 20th century. If you listen to music p paying attention to just that, you can learn a ton. I think a lot of people when they're learning how to improvise and they're listening to black American music, they don't, they, they miss that. It's, it's something that you can, you know, you can pay attention to the notes and the harmony and the rhythm itself and not hear that part. One of the ways that I practice hearing that time feel is to sing it. Like if I can listen to Errol Garner and sing along with his playing, really sing along to the time feel, maybe not even trying to get the pitches right. I'm gonna learn a lot. And I'm really gonna develop my sound that way. Um, and then beyond that, uh, when I get into my transcriptions and trying to play along with people, again, just trying to nail the timing of what they're doing. And then when I sit down to actually play and improvise, those things start to come out. 